I said it and I said it again. This is only a matter of time that U.S. service members were going to get killed because of this administration. Now it's happened. Three American military members that volunteered to serve this nation, they're not coming home. This is one of the hardest things for me to talk about. You have a son, you have a daughter, a spouse, a mother, a father. Look at them. Look at them right now. Look, look up your spouse in, the, in your phone. Now imagine you hear a knock on the door. Pull back the shade. Three people in uniform. You answer the door, and they tell you your family member's dead. That hug you got five months ago, that was the last time you got to see or talk to them forever. Forever. Three families got that this weekend for what? What did the United States gain strategically from that? People in Iran, Yemen, and a half a dozen other countries, they're cheering because Americans were killed. And Biden, the commander-in-chief's only comment about this was like eight seconds long. And then he followed up by a joke to the crowd and exited stage left. I want to point out that we had a tough day last night. Last night, wow. all three of us fall asleep. Jeez. And I wish you would go. <laughs> Lloyd Austin on two on his first day back to work, no less, said he was outraged. And this woman, representing the White House. What I will say, our deepest, uh, obviously our deepest condolences uh, go out and our he heartfelt condolences go out to the families uh, who lost uh, three, three brave, uh, three brave, uh, three brave, of, uh, three folks who are, who are military folks, who are brave, who are always fighting, who are fighting on behalf and of uh, this administration. No, we, we don't fight on the behalf of any administration, lady. We fight on behalf of the country, of the U.S. of A. I mean, is it really that hard for her to choke out any resemblance of sincerity? You have three dead, 30 troops injured because this administration has the worst foreign policy of anyone going back to before Jimmy Carter. And well, what are you going to do differently because of this? More than 160 attacks, and you have made zero changes on foreign policy, zero changes on the rules of engagement, zero changes to troop protection, stationing, and movement. Nothing. So spare me your outrage, Mr. Diversity Hire Lloyd Austin. And you know what? Anyone who voted for Biden or supports Joe Biden in the upcoming election, anyone who thinks they might vote for him again, this blood is on your hands, too. You are accountable for that. You knew that Joe Biden was a complete foreign policy disaster. Obama's Secretary of Defense, Robert Gates, warned us. He told the world that he was a disaster, and you didn't listen if you voted for him. So don't give me that, oh, I didn't know. You did know your vote has consequences because you are more interested in having, not having your feelings hurt by a mean tweet, and now you, Biden supporters, killed three of mine. You knew because we watched U.S. service members on their knees on a boat in the same region because the same people instituted the same stupid policy the last time Joe Biden was in the White House as VP. Strong people who put America first, like Trump did, don't start wars. Weak people who have no idea what they're doing start wars. In 1945, we dropped the atomic bomb so our enemies would know, know we would. We dropped the second one to let them know that we would do it again. And we didn't need to drop a third one because they surrendered, because of our strength. And now they're our ally. I'm not advocating for nuking Iran, folks. I'm advocating through peace, through strength. These Houthi rebels, they train all day barefoot in the sand somewhere. They get a single piece of bread to eat for the whole day just for the opportunity to kill Americans. Because that's how they have been raised for the better part of their lives. And, and what is our military doing? Drag queen shows? You think they give a damn about empty threats? What is your message to Hezbollah and its backer, Iran? Don't. Don't, don't, don't. What's the message to Iran? Don't. It was very important to send a very clear message to anyone who might seek to take advantage of the conflict in Gaza to threaten our personnel. Uh, here or anywhere else in the region. Don't do it. Wow. Real compelling, those three stooges. The only language these people speak is whether or not they think the U.S. will turn their village into Lake America. A and about zero of them think Biden will. And because of that, we might now have to. And, and all this administration seems to care about is, oh, we don't want to escalate. 
by, by, by being weak and feckless and useless, you escalated this, Joe Biden. And, and you don't think this is coming here? Open borders, military-age males pouring through? Here's a question for you people who may have, I don't know, 10K less in student loan debt, who voted for Biden because of orange man bad. What are you going to do when it's not 6,000 miles away? What are you going to do when that bomb is on your train or your plane or, God forbid, attacking your kid's school somewhere? You didn't want an armed guard there. You whined about that. You gave up your guns because you're a weenie. What are you going to do? Seriously. Oh, sorry. Took too long to decide you're already dead. You see, that's how it works. I've seen it. And where's the rest of the world on this? When, when they're not criticizing us for owning guns or V8 pickup trucks or whatever the flavor of the day is. Every time, every country, when something happens, Ukraine, Israel, whatever, something happens, the rest of the world comes crying to America, oh, come save us. Where are they now? Europe is 3,000 miles closer to this problem than us, yet our troops are dying. Europe is getting more goods through this body of water than we do, yet our military is defending it. You want to bomb Iran, Lindsey Graham, or John Cornyn, like you said? You go to Congress and you do it right. No more of this Iraq war BS, where we just do whatever we want under some unfounded pretense. The Constitution has a process for this. I, I know D.C. doesn't really care about that, but I still do. You want, to, you want to do the right thing, Joe Biden and Lloyd Austin, now that you're finally back? You know what you can legally do today? You can change the TTPs, the tactics, techniques, and procedures that our military members prescribe to. You can change the rules of engagement. You can change this effective immediately. If you approach an American warship, we will make your pronouns was and were. You fly a drone near, not over, but near a U.S. establishment, we will turn it into pixie dust. And if you launch an attack on a U.S. service member, we will pound the base that it came from into a powder so fine that you can make bread out of it. That's a good start. These people are going to continue to shoot at Americans until they believe that their losses will be greater than those that we can inflict. That is a fact. And you know what else can be done? By the stroke of a pen by the end of this show, you can sanction the ever-loving hell out of Iran and their proxies. Naval blockade, landlock all of their trade routes. And those allies that always whine about doing something for them, time to step up, have our back. Anyone else we give money to, if you trade so much as a paperclip with Iran or its proxies, we will cut you off, not only from our funding, but from any aid for anything for the next hundred years. This is what someone who cares about our service members sounds like, because I do. You want to honor them, Joe Biden, instead of checking your watch? Make their death the catalyst for real change, for the better.